Hi, everybody. Uh, thank you, Commissioner Warren. Uh, it's exciting to be here today. A um, lot going on right here in uh, Big Ten land, and I want to congratulate Commissioner Warren on uh, you know a great couple months here and, and leading this this conference into the future. And uh, you know, a lot of people I'm sure had a hand in that, and certainly want to uh, you know tip my cap to all the the presidents and athletic directors and, and everybody involved with it, but certainly Commissioner. Uh, Warren being a big part of the expansion here of the conference. Um, you know, really want to thank the leadership of, of President Johnson and Gene Smith, two people who have had a huge impact on my career here in a short period of time. Um, and they've done unbelievable things at Ohio State and continue to do as we move into the future. Um, you know, I, I think as we look into uh, this season, it's an exciting season for us. We have three guys here today, C.J. Stroud, Jackson Smith and Jigman, Ronnie Hickman, um, who really – that we could have probably brought, you know, 10 or 15 different guys here today, but, but they really, um, you know, and capture what we want as, as a player. You know, you start with Ronnie Hickman. This is a guy who's been through a lot of adversity at Ohio State, uh, had some injuries, but then played some really good football the last couple of years, has a, had a really good off season, has had really good leadership. We're going to need that veteran leadership, especially early in, in the season as we kick off with Notre Dame at home. Uh, Jackson Smith and Jigba. Uh, had a tremendous year last year, uh, had a really strong off offseason. Uh, he's one of the more competitive young men I've been around and has had a very, again, strong off season. All three of these guys have been named to our leadership committee. And then, uh, then C.J. Stroud, uh, who uh, last year really grew going to last year. It's amazing at this time he had not thrown a college football pass, uh, grew as the season went on to a Heisman Trophy finalist. Uh, but this off season, he's been really uh, had an edge to him. Uh, he's just done a great job with his leadership. And so uh, because of that, we've had a really good off season, And I think it's, uh, it's great to see a team come together. Uh, I think everybody, every coach will say they had a great off season. So I'm not just going to fall in line, but, but I'm excited about what this team is. And I'd, I'd kind of uh, describe them as edgy this off offseason. Um, uh, we do start with Notre Dame early in the year. Um, I want to thank Buckeye Nation because there's just so much excitement around our program this year. Uh, that game and the last game, the rivalry game at the end of the year is already sold out. Uh, our our uh, home schedule. I think there's only season or single tickets available right now. Uh, so there's been a lot of excitement around that and a lot of excitement around this team. So as we head into the preseason, this will be an important preseason. We've got to start off the season well. We've got to play well in our first game. And, um, and that starts next week. So with that, take any questions you guys have. Okay, we'll start over here. Uh, Tim May, Letterman Rowe. Uh, Ryan, expound on C.J. Stroud, though, just the way he's grown as a leader over the last year. Like you said, this time a year ago, you hadn't even named him as a starter. Uh, but where has he really stepped up in that regard? C.J.'s always had uh, very good leadership skills. He's always had a voice. But uh, once you go on the field and you show credibility that you can do it, it just you, you walk a little differently and, and guys look at you through a different lens. And I think that's been the case. Uh, I think – when you're young and you go into a season, you haven't played, uh, you're just trying to figure out a way to complete that first pass, get that first win, and you're just so focused on your job and maybe the offense. Uh, this offseason, he's done a great job of really taking a, a bunch of guys on defense over to his house. He's cooked for them. He's um, really approached it like a coach, and that's what leaders do, and, and that's what really good quarterbacks do. So uh, for a third-year player to take that kind of approach has been great to see. We're going, to start, we're going to start here in the middle. Hi, Coach. Caleb Spinner, Scarlet and Gray Sports Radio. Your first three opponents this season, Notre Dame, Arkansas State, and Toledo, Ohio State has matched up a combined nine times against in history before this year. How does your preparation change when you look at teams like this versus the ones you see all the time? Well, you don't know exactly know what you're going to get. I think that's, uh, especially with the new staff, um, you know, you're not exactly sure what, what's going to happen. It's not like being in the eighth, ninth, tenth game of the year or into November, where you have a whole bunch of games, uh, you know, um, you know, cutups to watch and, and expectations and, and tendencies. So uh, you have to focus on yourself. You have to focus on fundamentals. You have to be able to adjust in game, and, and try to do the best you can to have contingency plans in place for those games. We'll go here. Hi, Ryan. Dave Biddle from 24-7 Sports. Um, in year one of the Jim Knowles era, so to speak, on defense, what are reasonable expectations in year one? Like, I'm sure improving, improving isn't enough. You guys need to markedly improve. Just what are your thoughts and, on your expectations for the defense? Yeah, I mean, at first, we have to play winning football, and, and that starts with, with stopping the run. Um, 
I think that this uh, offseason has been excellent in terms of them installing the defense in terms of schematics. I think our new staff has done an excellent job and, and Jim with the, the linebackers, Perry with the safeties, Tim with the corners, and, and obviously Larry up front. Uh, they come back with a lot of experience, you know, almost the entire defense back. Um, and really, you know, almost the entire Rose Bowl team is back from last year. So, so that's exciting. So we have a little bit more experience there. So that, that, that part's good. But no, a new scheme, uh, new coaches, uh, all of those things are new. And, and I, I think going up against them in the spring and then seeing what's happened this summer and now into the preseason, it's been exciting to watch. There's just a, an aggressiveness about them. Uh, but in terms of expectations, I mean, yeah, we expect a top 10 defense. I mean, that's what we want. And, uh, you know, when we've played our best football, it's because we played really good defense and we've been balanced and played complimentary football. So, um, you know, we want to obviously stop the run to begin with and, and then go from there. But uh, we expect a top 10 defense. Yeah, Rob Oller, Columbus Dispatch. Ryan, you, you said Jackson's one of the more competitive guys you've seen. These guys are all competitive. What makes him different? Can you have any detail or can you get into that a little bit? Well, he, he's uh, he's not a real um, a talkative guy just in terms of on the field. I mean, he kind of keeps to himself. But when he says something, people listen. And, and when he does speak, he's got a backbone. Uh, he's strong in what he says and his opinions. And, uh, and and he believes in, in hard work. He believes in toughness. When you watch the way he plays, he's tough. Um, you know, winning really matters to him. He tries to win every rep when he's out there. Uh, I've just been very impressed with the way he's practiced, the way he plays. He doesn't want to miss a rep. Um, that's just the way he is. He's a no-nonsense kind of guy, and he, he doesn't uh, stand for people making excuses. He doesn't stand for people not being accountable. And um, you know, for somebody who isn't real talkative or loud, uh, he does, in his own way, hold guys accountable. And, and I think his competitiveness shows that way, and he leads by playing really, really hard. And um, I think you saw that, in the, especially in the last game, but you saw that in other games as well, just how hard he plays. Hey, Coach. Uh, Steve Hellwagon, Bucknuts 24-7 Sports. I uh, want to ask about the offensive line. you got a couple new starters there this year, and uh, they did a pretty good job last year keeping C.J. clean in pass protection, but I know there were some concerns maybe with physicality in the run game. Just what are you going to do to bring that new offensive line around and develop some depth behind the starters as well? Yep. I mean, those, those are areas of, uh, of focus. Um, Justin Fry's come in and done a really good job of um, you know talking about you know we're not changing things but he does teach things different he has a different style of coaching a little bit different technique and so that's been great uh, we have moved some different guys around we lost Nick we lost there um, but uh, but it's good to have those other guys back um, I'm really excited about the off season that Dewan Jones has had he's lost a bunch of weight he's in really good shape uh, same thing with Matt Jones Donovan Jackson stepped up um, and had a really good off season as well Luke has been a leader and and Paris moves to left tackle so. Uh, I mean, that's, that's a pretty good group right there. But like you said, I don't know if it was the physicality in the run game or just maybe the fits weren't right. But when we needed to, uh, at times, we didn't get it done. Other times we did. When you look at our numbers, they were very, very good. And, um, you know, we did run the ball when we needed to. But uh, that balance is what we want. And certainly when you get to short yardage situations, big games, uh, red zone, you got to be able to run the ball at a high level. And that's going to be the focus. And, and the offensive line, the tight ends have a big hand in that, the running backs, but also Coach Fry in the run game. So. Hi, Ryan. Bill Rabinowitz, Columbus Dispatch. You, I know you made a big point of emphasis during the spring on leadership. You just talked about CJ's leadership. In the summer, players obviously have to take the initiative. What have you seen in terms of, of that for your team? Yeah, so uh, we really did an extensive uh, you know, study on how we wanted to handle leadership this year. Um, we had two different uh, periods where we elected a, a leadership committee. And uh, those were you know, different positions, different uh, position groups, uh, different classes. Uh, they were voted on by the team. We went through the spring. Then we re-voted as we came back off of um, the break in May. And, uh, and we really intermingled the team. We tried to stay away from the position groups as much as we could. And I think that brought the team together a lot more. It also forced guys into leadership positions. <clears throat> I think the thing that was neat was that uh, the first round of leadership was not the same round in, in the summer. So some guys maybe you know took a step back. Some guys took a step up, and so uh, now as we head into the summer, we kind of have an idea who the captains are going to be because we've already gone through it once. And I think it's something that we're going to grab onto moving forward, and it's put guys in a situation to have a voice. And um, you know I'm hoping that this pays off for us during the season. 
Yeah, Coach Jack Park, uh, Sports Radio 97.1 uh, The Fan in Columbus. Good to see you. Uh, I, I tag along a little bit to your previous question about opening with Notre Dame. Uh, probably the most highly anticipated uh, opener in, in school history, at least by the fans. And how has that impacted your players compared to other openers you've had, both in the NFL and college, uh, if any, or maybe not at all? Yeah, Jack, no, it's, it's been real. I, I think our guys feel it. I think they feel the excitement. I think they feel the anticipation. I think they, uh, they just feel the community rally around this team. But that, that first game being a night game is... Uh, I mean, how else do you cut it? It's going to be electric, and our guys know that. So there's a little bit of urgency about them, and there's going to be this preseason. So uh, last year we started on the road at Minnesota, uh, and, and that was a big uh, conference game on a road with a very inexperienced team. So uh, we had to play well in that game. Uh, that's similar this year. Now we're at home, a little bit more experienced team, but the plan's going to be the same. We got to play really good football in that first game. Um, you know, and I think when you when you look at our our season. We have to have competitive stamina. We have to play really good at the beginning of the year, and we got to play really good at the end of the year. And that's the challenge of being Ohio State. you got to win them all. And so competitive stamina is one of the things that we've been talking about as a team. Coach, all the way back on the TV platform, please. Coach Levon Whitaker, ABC 57, and South Bend. Uh, Coach, kind of to piggyback off my friend up there, um, opening up against Notre Dame, um, and that buildup that you talk about, what is that doing for your team? But also, in addition to that, with a guy like Marcus Freeman, who's a, who went to um, Ohio State and played at Ohio State, do you think that a team like Notre Dame should join the Big Ten Conference under the leadership of uh, Freeman and just because of the buildup that you had this, this season? Well, I think, I think it's an exciting time for our fans, an exciting time for our, our team. It's obvious, obviously an exciting time for the Big Ten and obviously the things that have gone on here in the last uh, couple months. And so... Um, I, I just I think it's a great opportunity to play against a really good opponent. Um, you know, Marcus Freeman does a very very good job. He's got a really good staff. Uh, they're very knowledgeable, very uh, energetic. Do a great job in recruiting. Do a great job schematically. So uh, it's going to be a really big challenge for us. They have a really good team coming in to, to Ohio State. So uh, all those things kind of have our guys' attention. And um, so I think there there is a little bit of more attention to our guys, just knowing what, what a big game we have to start the season off with. Hey, Coach Day, Tino Bovenzi with Spectrum News 1. Uh, you had some time to process the loss to the team up north last year. Uh, just talk about how that has really catapulted you guys into the offseason as a motivating factor, and also just how good you feel about this team. It kind of feels like you have something special brewing in Columbus this year. Well, every year the expectations are high, you know, and that doesn't change, you know, based on what happened the year before. Um, you know, the expectation is to win them all, and that's – I said that in my opening press conference uh, when I was named the head coach, and that's just the way it is. So, you know, maybe at some places 11-2 and two with a Rose Bowl victory is a good year. It isn't at Ohio State. And so uh, our three goals are beat the team up north, uh, win the Big Ten Championship, win the National Championship. That's, that's the goal. Those three things didn't happen last year. So uh, that didn't change this year, next year, or the year before. Uh, just a different team, um, a different, um, you know, group of guys, more experienced um, you know, again, when you think about those first few games last year, I mean, we just we had a lot of young guys, and now we've gone through a whole season of off season together. I think our guys are a little scarred; they're a little calloused. Um, they know what it's like to lose a game, and that's not fun. And so, you know, uh, we remind our guys about that regularly, uh, but we also know we have to move forward and focus on what's coming next. Okay, thank you, Coach. Just a reminder that all the coaches will have podiums.